So let's take a look at how that happens. So we have our parental double-stranded DNA and we get a replication fork going. We have a helicase that comes in, breaks the hydrogen bonds between the bases and separates the two strands. So think of helicase, it's unwinding the helix. Then we get single strand stabilizing proteins which are represented here. Otherwise these bases are going to want a hydrogen bond with their buddies over here. But we need to make another strand, a new strand using the old strand as a template. Now DNA polymerase, in this case DNA polymerase 3, can't get its active site around a single strand. But RNA polymerases have no problems doing this. Now there is a special RNA polymerase called primase that makes an RNA primer, gets the double strand going. So now DNA polymerase can get its active site around the double strand and it can start elongating the um, D new DNA strand by adding in the triphosphates that match, that will base pair with the bases on the parental strand. Now DNA polymerase 3 does the bulk of the polymerization. Now remember that DNA polymerase can only go from 5 prime to 3 prime. Now up here 5 prime is here, 3 prime is here and the DNA polymerase is going in the direction of the replication fork. So we have an RNA primer here and as the DNA polymerase goes it just keeps having open track ahead of it. But here on the lagging strand, the primer was here originally. We don't, well let's go here because we can see that this primer is being removed. The primer was here when the replication fork was here and but the DNA polymerase has to go this direction. So the DNA polymerase attaches here, goes this direction, runs into another primer. So we have to back up, put another primer, go this way, runs into this primer back up, make another primer, go until it runs into another primer. And we call this the lagging strand because it's doing the polymerization in segments. And we call these segments Okasaki fragments. This strand on the other hand that is being replicated continuously is the leading strand. And it's the one that's polymerizing in the direction of the replication fork. Now we can't leave these RNA primers in. RNA is not as stable as DNA, so we want to get rid of these. So DNA polymerase 1 comes through and replaces the RNA primers with DNA. We've got all these little nicks where these primers have been replaced because we can't hook a 3' end to a 5' end because it's going the wrong direction. So then we get another enzyme called DNA ligase that comes and heals the nicks, does a dehydration reaction between the two ends, and we get a replicated DNA. We call this type of replication semi-conserved because in each new strand we've got an old strand and we've got a new strand, semi-conserved. Now let's look at what happens when we do this kind of replication with a circular bacterial chromosome. There is a place to start. Unlike eukaryotic chromosomes which are linear, you know where to start. You start at the end. Actually you sometimes start in the middle but we won't go into that. I will leave that for more in-depth DNA classes. So in prokaryotes we have an origin which is basically a start here sign. So helicase comes in, starts unraveling the DNA strand and we get a daughter strand being replicated. Well we've got two origins of replication going the two, this replication bubble gets bigger and bigger and bigger until the two replication forks meet opposite the original origin of replication. See how this is kind of folding down and so we've got an origin of replication here and an origin of replication here. Well once the polymerase has hit the termination site then the two chromosomes are separated and then the cell can divide. Prokaryotes that have circular chromosomes generally only have two replication forks, one going each direction. Part of this is because 
generally speaking, prokaryotic genomes are much smaller than eukaryotic genomes. Eukaryotic genomes, when they're being replicated, we generally have multiplication, multiple replication forks because if we didn't have them, it would take much, much longer to replicate the genome. Now, I would like to put in an animation that is wonderful that shows you exactly what I've talked about, but with everything moving. The replication of DNA begins at a sequence of nucleotides called the origin of replication. Helicase unwinds the double-stranded DNA helix and single-strand binding proteins react with the single-stranded regions of the DNA and stabilize it. DNA polymerase 3 is the major enzyme involved in DNA replication. DNA polymerase 3 can only add a nucleotide to the three prime end of a pre-existing chain of nucleotides and it cannot initiate a nucleotide chain. Therefore, an RNA polymerase called a primase constructs an RNA primer, a sequence of about 10 nucleotides complementary to the parent DNA. DNA polymerase 3 can then add deoxyribonucleotides to synthesize the new complementary strand of DNA. Because the two parent strands of DNA are antiparallel, they are oriented in opposite directions and must therefore be elongated by different mechanisms. The leading strand elongates toward the replication fork by adding nucleotides continuously to its growing three prime end. In contrast, the lagging strand, which elongates away from the replication fork, is synthesized discontinuously as a series of short segments called Okazaki fragments. When the DNA polymerase 3 reaches the RNA primer on the lagging strand, it is replaced by DNA polymerase 1, which removes the RNA and replaces it with DNA. DNA ligase then attaches and forms phosphodiester bonds. The DNA is further unwound, new primers are made, and DNA polymerase 3 jumps ahead to begin synthesizing another Okazaki fragment. For simplicity, DNA polymerase 3 has been depicted as separate units, one acting on the leading strand and the other acting on the lagging strand. The current view of DNA polymerase 3 is that the two subunits function together with the DNA on the lagging strand, folding to allow the dimeric DNA polymerase molecule to replicate both strands of the parental DNA duplex simultaneously. Proteins other than DNA polymerase 3 are not shown. Well, that's it for this topic. Here is a table that came from the textbook that I find to be very helpful, so you'll want to take a look at that. Also, here are reminders of the learning objectives for this topic.